We're going to do double sword. This is basically a variation of Chinese sword with the extra chop. There's a couple of variations. First one we're going to do is against a right punch. So Paul is throwing a right punch at me. I want to step out of the way just like I do with Chinese sword. That doesn't, that does not change. So you go throw it again. I'm here, my cover hand. Well, guess what? It's up here for a reason. I am going to throw another chop. So go ahead again. Now look, I'm ready for another technique. I'm slapping it through. That's the idea of this one here, throw a punch. I'm coming through it. And then I'm going to get my hand ready to go or ready to come up wherever I need it. I don't like, this is one thing I don't like about Chinese sword, Japanese sword, double sword, delayed sword, Let's throw a punch. I'm working on the inside. So this hand is, could come around, it could come grab me. That's what I don't like about it. But here's what I do like about these techniques. Throw a punch. I am working on the inside. <laughs> There's a lot of vulnerable things on the inside. But as you see from a lot of my videos on YouTube, I do like to go to the outside. That's great for sparring and things like that. And just in case I don't drop them. For the longest time, I was running about 130 pounds. And I didn't have that much power back in the day. I'm starting to gain more power now, but I'm also 30 pounds heavier than that. I'm at 160, 165 now. So I'm at the heaviest weight that I have been, but I still have the same speed I had, if not more, yeah. and more precision. So now I have a little more power behind me, which is nice. But the thing is, when you don't have a lot of power, you hit a guy and they don't stop, and they outpower you, and you're in their stronghold right there, they grab you, they can hit you, you could be in major trouble. Right. So that's what I like and don't like about these techniques. Now I'm going to show you the other variation. Paul's going to throw the left punch, and I'm going to do the same hand. Throw it here. Now what I'm going to do is I come up to the face. I can smash him in the nose, side of the face, and then this one here, I might be able to get to the chops of the neck. Come over here, please, Paul. Paul throws the left punch. I go, oh, I don't want to fight. I'm here. Wham. I don't care if I have precision on this at this point. I'm just caring about throw a punch. Oh, I don't get hit. Stop him any way I can. Look, I didn't even get the chop. I just forearmed him. Whoa! I can push him down. <laughs> and Paul didn't expect that. All right, so now works. if I did that quick and then chopping yeah. downward, he's probably going to be going down or stumbling into something. All right. But that's what's nice about these techniques is throw a punch. I'm here. Look, I can just kind of put my weight in there. If I don't have a lot of striking power, I can mm -hmm. push and then get that other hand to get the nice chop in there. This side actually is more impactful because when you push me away, I can't even take a right swing even okay. if you're open. It's, it's pretty good. I know this is just the beginning about the yellow bell, but throw a punch, please. As I'm here, I can take Paul out right here. Boy, <laughs> Paul did not expect me to do that either. That's why I just slapped the mat. What makes that a little bit easier for me to do is hold the punch out. That's what he did. He wasn't fighting against me. He's throwing out there. So we don't really want to abuse our training partner like that by surprising with things like that. But That's Paul, okay. Paul's used to falling and all that, so sometimes <laughs> I do that to him on the video. I don't know, it's sick, sick, sick sense of humor of mine. But anyhow, and I most like people it, aren't going to be punching like that. So I like it, that makes me even sicker. I know. That's why I do it to him. <laughs> but throw the punch can, please. So now he's not going to leave his hand no. here, is he? So throw it more realistic like how you would do it. So this hand, I'm not riding off of it here. Anyhow, throw a punch. I redirect it. He's wide open. Look, backhand. Boom. So that's how you can make that work. And he has some hard arms. I feel that block. I nail it. I feel that block. When you do the martial arts, you will feel things. So there's always a disclaimer on my videos. Because the fact is, we're not basket weaving, as one of my fly clubs used to say. Right. Every time we jam a toe or get a hard block, bloody nose, mm -hmm. and someone go, oh, and he goes, yeah, you know, but we're not basket weaving. Pretty good. <laughs> it is the martial arts. And like I said before, video never replaces the dojo. 
never does. It's fun to work with somebody. But if you're training with a partner, be careful. Okay? Don't go recklessly doing it. Take your time going through these moves. Okay, so now just throw the left punch. I'm going to do it with the left hand this time. I'm here. I'm here. Man, that was the sloppiest thing in the world, wasn't it? Because that's my left hand. I'm not as coordinated with that, am I? And plus, here's the thing is, I'm moving at one speed, he's moving at another speed, we were predicting that. Mm -hmm. Right. See, that's what I love about having those mistakes in there. How you learn. Because the thing is, we're practicing that at real speeds. This is why I always say you got to be aware. So now, Poo Poo is about to hit the fan. I'm ready to go. He's coming in here. Now, see, this really came close to my face. Because, you know why? His hand was hooked a little bit, and this isn't the, punch, the block that I should have done. Throw the punch. I should have just did that one. From Just from the nature of this. This is why we talked about position recognition. We had to recognize what position he's in before we do our attack, or our defense, not attack. Because we're attacking with the assailant. <laughs> but our defense. So work on that. Have fun with that. Can't wait to see you in the next video.